Bitcoin is an already big and soon to become perhaps even bigger bet over at MicroStrategy. The software company now owns so much Bitcoin, its gains are worth some $1.4 billion on paper. I want to bring back Michael Saylor, CEO of MicroStrategy, to discuss. Michael, always good to have you here on the show. So you just reported results, beat on earnings and revenue. You're sitting on these massive paper gains, but racking up these accounting charges for the Bitcoin that you're holding. Walk us through your latest strategy. Um, well, you know, we're lo leveraged long Bitcoin. We've got a 10-year view, and our view is that Bitcoin is an open digital property network, and one day billions of people are going to hold digital property a la Bitcoin on their mobile phones and so we just want to get there before the billions of users get there. And we're patient. Bitcoin's now at its highest level since mid-May, $40,750 at the moment. Why should investors invest in MicroStrategy rather than just Bitcoin itself? Well, MicroStrategy is an operating company. And so we sweep operating income into Bitcoin. And we're also leveraged long. So we borrowed $2.2 billion at a blended interest rate of about 1.5% interest. So if you, if you like Bitcoin, then you definitely would like the idea of owning $2.2 .2 billion of it at 1.5% interest. If you expect it to go up more than 1.5% a year, then that leverage is really working for you. So I think we've been very intelligent about the way we put together the leverage and, uh, and we're unique in that regard. There is no publicly traded company that's got our Bitcoin position with the ability uh, to raise debt and buy Bitcoin with debt. Now, you have this opportunity coming up with that at-the-market filing to sell another billion dollars in new stock to raise funds to buy more Bitcoin. What's the likelihood that you will do that? Well, I think in time we will buy Bitcoin. It'll just be a question of whether we buy it with cash flows or with debt or with equity. And that's all just a function of market conditions. And we try to do whatever's going to be a creative for our shareholders. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very bullish on Bitcoin long term. The developments of the past quarter are wonderful for Bitcoin, and they're setting up a, a, really, nice, um, a really nice platform for it to grow from. So what would market conditions need to look like in order for you to do that? Well, you know, as you can imagine, we're looking at the debt markets all the time and the equity markets and the Bitcoin markets and the option markets. And, and we have to make decisions uh, subject to market conditions that are going to be accretive to everybody involved. So uh, we, make, we make those decisions when the opportunities present themselves. You'll know when we do it. Are you looking at other coins? Are you looking at Ethereum? I know that obviously you're, you're really optimistic about the future of Bitcoin, but it is a more narrow view of what, uh, you know, the blockchain can be. You know, we think that uh, holding Bitcoin for the long term is the highest upside, lowest risk strategy we can pursue. Um, you know, some people think diversification means buy other types of cryptocurrencies or buy other kinds of equities. We think that by holding Bitcoin, we're diversified because we can see Bitcoin sitting on the balance sheets of cities, states, governments, companies, small investors, big investors. And ultimately, we think Bitcoin is going to be the core to big tech innovation at Apple, Amazon, and Facebook. So we just want to be holding the Bitcoin. There's never going to be more than 21 million of them. And we think that every investor and every company and every government on earth can benefit from Bitcoin. Walk me through how you see that innovation at big tech companies around Bitcoin happening. At, at what rate, did you say? Walk me through how you see that oh. innovation happening at those companies yeah. that you mentioned. I mean, Facebook, of course, uh, you know, tried to do Libra, didn't work out so well. Yeah, so let's take examples of Square and PayPal right now, um, and even Robinhood. Uh, for the next 65 and a half hours, you can't trade equity, and you can't get banking services, and you can't sell your real estate. You probably can't trade in gold either. What you can do is trade in crypto. And so Bitcoin in particular is something that everybody can get to 24-7, 365, and that's driving a lot of demand to integrate. I think that you're also going to see that Bitcoin is an international trust network. And so for companies like Twitter and Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, 
they have issues with spam and cybersecurity. And one of the best ways for them to eliminate spam and to upgrade cybersecurity is to integrate with Bitcoin and especially the Lightning Network in order to create higher levels of credit worthiness and trust with all of the cyber counterparties that are trading on their platforms. Well, so and of course, I, I Jack, Dorsey, Jack Dorsey is making a big bet on crypto and Bitcoin with Square. And of course, he's also talked about how t Bitcoin could be integrated into the Twitter platform. That said, there's also this view that you know, the rise of the blockchain and cryptocurrency is a threat to centralized networks like Twitter. You know, how do you square that? Well, um, I think that Bitcoin is the solution to cybersecurity at Facebook and Twitter and Google. And, and if you wanted to improve the quality of the user experience, then you need to have skin in the game. And so Bitcoin provides skin in the game for all of, all of the interactors in the cyber environment. I think that Jack understands that, and that's why he's enthusiastic about Bitcoin being integrated into Twitter. And I think that you're going to see other big tech networks like Facebook and Apple and Google and Amazon realize that the killer app is, is cybersecurity integrated into an international trust network. Interesting. What do you make? I know you were following Robinhood's IPO. What do you make of Robinhood becoming a bigger player in crypto? You know, obviously, they've talked about wanting to expand beyond trading, crypto transactions becoming a bigger piece of the pie. They mentioned Doge uh, uh, in, in their risk factors because, uh, you know, a significant amount of the transactions in crypto on Robinhood involve Dogecoin. You know, you know what's your take on them becoming more involved in this space? Well, you know, Crypto.com put out a survey this week where they actually showed that uh, the number of users in the crypto world went from 100 million to 200 million in four months, and the number of Bitcoin users has surged to 114 million, and they're adding 2 million Bitcoin users a week. So this is clearly where the excitement is and where the traffic is. And since Robinhood wants to reach out and be engaged with as many people as possible, I mean, the only option you have for engagement for the next, you know, 50 hours is Bitcoin or some kind of cryptocurrency. And of course, Bitcoin is the risk off king of all the cryptocurrencies. So for Robinhood, it makes total sense that they would want to drive that hard. Now, I know you've talked about 10 years, but when might MicroStrategy sell some of its Bitcoin to realize these paper gains. I mean, are you saying you won't do that for 10 years or could that happen sooner? Yeah, I mean, Bitcoin is not really a trading strategy. People joke it's an exit strategy. What we want to hold is a form of non-sovereign store of value forever. So uh, it's like I had a billion dollars and I want to give it to my great grandchildren I'm either going to buy land or I'm going to buy gold or I'm going to buy some other tangible property, Bitcoin's digital property. And so if I buy a billion dollars of Bitcoin, there's no reason why I wouldn't be holding it 100 years from now. Um, I took a survey. The average Twitter follower thinks it's going to last 3,500 years. Nobody's in a hurry with Bitcoin. We're thinking that it's the future of property.